So we'll move through the data grid from project to wing walls as we enter in data. A lot of this is just going to be dummy data, sample project, your reference number, whatever that is. The type is correct. The street address, we'll see there when the postcode was entered in, the climate zones are brought in here. This postcode only has one climate zone, so that's fine, but we'll check that. Side exposures. This is, a, to me, a suburban exposure block. If you read the definition there, we'd assume that there would be likewise dwellings on all sides, approximating a suburban setting. We put in our designer, the plan, revision, or dates, whether we've got a conflict of interest. Anything that we depart from the NatHERS technical notes, we should be noting this on our certificate. So if we use something different to standard practice, we just note it here in our certificate notes. If you'd like to make your own notes, put them there. Okay, let's move through the zones. We'll hide the penetrations out of the way and go through and name all of these zones so we've got a good reference. We'll go through the zone type. Kitchen is already good. Select all the beds. There's bedroom. Entry here, that's daytime. That's correct. Garage, obviously a garage. Bath two and the laundry and the bath one are going to be unconditioned as they all have an openable window on their external walls. The study would generally be classified as a living zone. Walk-in robe will be nighttime as it's adjacent to the bed or will be daytime and we've got that bedroom done. So zone types are done. Let's move to the next column, ceiling fans. Got our five ceiling fans in, just have to check their size is okay. Let's look at the electrical plan. They've said here, 1200 ceiling fans. So that's what we've got. Downlights wise, we have recessed downlights that are sealed with 50 mil clearance from insulation. We'd assume those are typical. It could be 90 mil or 100 mil. We'll leave it at the 100 mil default. We can see here though that the bedrooms don't have any of these downlights. So let's expand it back up so we can see the downlight group. Downlight here in bed two, that's actually zero. Similarly for bed three, that's also zero. And for bed one on the east there, you can see when I type in zero, they'll actually get removed off the visual plan. Entry, the auto penetrations has given us two. There's two, that's good. Garage has none, we'll zero those out too. The bath has an exhaust fan, that's correct. And one downlight, that's correct. The laundry has one downlight, that's correct. The study has two, not one, so the auto add was a little bit off there. The bath has one, we've got one. Walk and robe has one, one. Hall has one, one, and we did miss the kitchen, which has three in this space, that's correct and 10 in this space that's incorrect let's put in eight and we've done our downloads they are all 100 150 and sealed so our defaults are all okay there for the downloads we don't need to change their dimensions we'll just go through the exhaust fans these bathroom exhausts are noted here as 300 by 150s they're sealed with a hundred mil clearance from insulation so let's have the bath 300 and 150 and 100 clearance and they're sealed so that's okay those are done We'll go to the kitchen exhaust, a sealed range hood exhaust fan, 160 mil circular, so we can do that as a 160, 160 square with no insulation clearance. Range hoods are always modeled as sealed within NetHerds unless specified otherwise, uh, zero clearance. Okay, so we've done the penetrations within our zone data grid tab. Their adjacencies are all gonna be based on where they are. So these three downlights here are going to be adjacent to this ceiling, whereas these eight downlights will penetrate this ceiling. So that's visually helpful to know. You should be drawing them where they are so that they penetrate the correct adjacency and the last column here would be whether we wanted to override any of the volume calculations but typically where we find difficult to get volume calculations automatically right are you might want to check a rate section you might want to also check a roof space volume or those with lots of split walls where the walls uh, stack up volume calculations are worth checking for those rooms there energy rating is obviously based on air volume the heat in the air so getting the volumes right is always important all right, let's move on from the zone tab into the wall tab. 
We'll group by zone here just to get a bit of feel. What I like to do is typically do heights first. We've got several different heights here in this dwelling. We've got lots of 2400s. We have some 2486. We then have some 2780. We then have some rate sections that are going to be the averages of their top and bottom. And then we have some floating walls that are going to have various heights too. What we might do is set a base. The base here is 2700. That's incorrect. So we should just select all of our walls here and let's just give them all 2400 and we can then adjust off that. So one of the first things we can do is get these garage wall heights correct. These external walls are actually going to be the full 2486. Their heights, their top heights though, are common with the rest of the building here. So we want to actually keep the top height of those walls at 2400. And we're actually just going to change 2486 total height with a base of negative 86 and a top height of 2400. The internal walls there will remain at 2400. These walls in these zones, we can select all of these walls or we could do it in the data grid and they're all going to be 2780. Uh, and also the wall behind there, I've just double clicked that to select it, is 2780. Those walls there can remain the default 2400. This wall here, 2400, 2400. Uh, these walls here, 2400, 2400. It's fine. This wall here would be 2400 with the floating wall on top of it. This wall here is 2780. And this wall here, 2780. And that wall there, which would be 2780 as well. And the height there, latch, will be 2400. And then it's just this pitched section here this wall we'll look at the elevation it's 3600 so we've done our wall heights now throughout the building we can move to the construction look at the elevations get a better feel of what we'll need first we can see here we have a wall type 8 as well as a 31 the designers have shown this as a different wall type where it is above the ceiling than below so this is a weatherboard or timber construction on our east we have a brick on our south, a wall type 4 of brick, some kind of rendered product, wall type 7, as well as a 25 block. And on the west, we have wall type 4 for the garage and the wall type 6, as well as their matching types for above. We'll also have to pick up the construction types of, this is that internal mass nib wall here, as well as the mass of those walls there. Internally, all of the internal stud walls look uninsulated. However, the roof space walls are an insulated type. Wall type 12, we can go through that too. So here's our wall type schedule. Wall type 4 was the one used on the garage. That's just a double brick, 110, 110, 10 mil gap. Wall type 6 is used on our west elevations and east elevations to the bed. That here is a 110, 40 mil gap, 110 with plasterboard internally, so a cavity brick style construction. Wall type 7 was the south elevation of these two rooms here. It's a actually an interesting construction. It's a reverse brick veneer. It has a fiber cement sheet with the stud wall. So the cladding is the fiber cement and airspace, and then the brick is the internal face. So it's got lots of thermal mass internally. We'll have to model that correctly and make sure we get the direction of that assembly correct. Wall type 8 is the north elevation through here, as well as these entry alcove walls. You can see here it's a 12 mil plywood panel on a 20 mil cavity. Non-reflective airspace in the cavity, uh, 2.5 insulation in the stud wall, and a 10 mil plasterboard. A single brick 110 brick as our thermal mass nib wall wall type 25 is our south through this section here and we can see here it's actually a 30 mil limestone on a 6 mil fc sheet substrate sacking and then an r2.5 stud and 10 mil plaster and then we've just got we're starting to just get variations of the same without the plasterboard this is the same as wall type 8 without the insulation and here in our internal wall schedule the main one we need to pick up is this 110 brick insulated with 1.5 insulation and plasterboard as well as its roof space type without the plasterboard so we'll be using that in the living room internal walls so we'll go to the wall library here by hitting keyboard shortcut C and we'll go through and select all of the wall assemblies that we need to assign we could start that by clearing all walls white clear walls that are in use and we can select what we need so let's check if we have the defaults ready for all of these assemblies Certainly for that limestone wall, we'll need to be creating a new custom one, but hopefully for all the others, we can use what we've got here.
for wall type 4 110 mil double brick that one here is a default assembly let's look in the cavity brick for wall type 6 which is just a simple uninsulated 110 110 plasterboard internally so here brick 40 mil air gap brick 10 mil plasterboard so that's great that's our wall type 6 we then have a reverse brick veneer, FC sheet clad. Let's see if there's a default for that within the assembly. Reverse brick veneer. We have weatherboard clad, direct fix, metal clad. We don't have a fiber cement default. It is a direct fix in terms of the FC sheet is fixed directly to the stud wall without a cavity there. So let's just copy off one of these direct fix exposed internally, not the plasterboard internally type copy. Create our copy here. Let's call it reverse veneer FC no have exposed and fix up the name here to be FC clad direct fix exposed internally and we'll select that custom assembly ready for use within our project the plywood panel is relatively similar to a lot of the default weatherboard constructions the three here are a direct fix a batten non-reflective cavity and a reflective cavity so it's going to be relatively similar to this let's copy it off and call it ply non-reflective cav plywood clad battened non-reflective cavity stud wall we'll change the material here to plywood and it was uh, 12 mil with a 20 mil air gap has been noted here all wall cavities are unventilated so we should change that too it's non-reflective and we see here our insulation options here r2.5 r2 etc so that's looking good we've got that modeled correctly single brick here wall type 18 it's just a single 110 mil post select that ready wall type 25 is not going to be in the default assembly a limestone on fc sheet stud wall so in terms of group we could put this in any group really let's call it a, a brick veneer we'll copy one of these existings and we'll call it limestone direct fix limestone clad fc sheet back wall direct fix so there is no air gap in this if you're being confused that's going to be our empty stud wall if you find that confusing put in one of the insulation products here as in its insulation options list just so you can see which ones are base materials and which ones are insulation products let's get rid of that row there change our external material to limestone 30 mil we need a fiber cement sheet in here it is six mil and then our insulation and then our plasterboard so that limestone wall is ready to go we then have a double brick here that's exposed uh, sorry cavity brick that's exposed and we have a, this is an uninsulated version of this in the roof space currently you can't set the assembly of a roof space so we'll be ignoring that Internally, this is just an empty plasterboard stud wall and we do want this single brick insulated. We could do that off one of these brick veneer products here and just say internal brick insulated PB, internal brick wall insulated plasterboard. And you could either get rid of all the insulation options here that aren't what we want, just so we're left with the only one that we want for this custom assembly. It's going to be a brick on the outside, so we need to think that outside face is brick when we're looking at this within the visual view, insulation and then plaster, so we can get rid of this air gap of a typical brick. And that's our product there. The other walls are a single brick wall that we have. We also have this variation without the plasterboard. We are being biggy. We can get rid of that. It's going to be where it's used in the roof space. And we also have a internal wall that is only lined on one side. So in our internal walls, got our standard plasterboard, plasterboard, and we also have a similar wall as part of the default there. So that's ready to go too. All right, so we're looking pretty good. Got all of our wall types ready there. Let's go assign them and go into the wall data grid. And we'll get these garage walls first these are all the double brick construction 110 exposed and we'll put in insulation as we go to they have no insulation at all our west elevation as well as our east are using the cavity brick construction which is the cavity brick 110 plasterboard internally insulation wise it is just the 40 mil default air gap for that assembly you could consider if you wanted to improve insulating that wall there it would probably make sense our north wall here, as well as these walls of the entry alcove, are the walls that use the plywood type that we've perhaps not added. Select those again. 
find our plywood construction non-reflective cavity plywood clad. It actually uses an R2.5 throughout that assembly, so let's do that now too. Move through to our south facing wall. This is limestone direct fit again, R2.5. And then we have our reverse brick veneer section through here. Reverse brick veneer, R2.5. All of our internal walls are uninsulated. We'll leave those as the default, except we have our internal walls here, which are the internal brick in PB. So these walls here are the lower walls. They're the, the plasterboard clad ones. So we can see here in terms of the insulation, this one is directional. So we will want to use the direction arrows of Hero. The, so we'll check our wall assembly. That brick had the external face as the brick and the internal face as the plasterboard. So internal plasterboard, external brick, that's correct. Internal plasterboard, external brick. So that's fine. So the direction of those is fine. Otherwise you would need to flip that. I actually forgot to put the heights of those floating walls in, so let's do that now. So all of these floating walls have a similar height, they're going to be 380 high. For floating walls obviously their base heights are quite different, 2400 up off the ground and the top height of that wall is 2780, so that's perfect. We have a floating wall here and there's another floating wall behind here. These two are our internal brick construction that is exposed. It's R1.52. Those heights of those walls are going to be this section through here. We've got the 2780 ceiling line behind us there, so it's the height of this 820 and 310. 565 is their average wall height. Their base height is 2780, so those guys are done. This floating wall here is going to be 2780 section here 100 to 310 so that's about 205 off a base height of 2780. This kitchen wall here is actually more like 460 high off a base of 2400 and this floating wall between will be from this type of height to this type of height which is 690 so plus 690 divided by 2 is 575 average height off a base of 2400. All of our floating walls now have a base height. They're all actually also insulated with R2.5. They're not using the standard internal wall, they're using the exposed one side type. Some of the last walls we need to enter, we've got our mass wall here. That was just a single brick exposed. I forgot to enter as well when we were going through heights. It is about 3100 high. And so just scanning through, we also have these four nib walls or null adjacency style spaces that we put as neighbour. We can just put those as internal uninsulated walls. We'll leave their ceiling heights too. And the last thing to do would be the external colours of those walls within the wall data grid. External wall of solar absorptance is 50% medium. And for wall types 8, 25 and 31, it's 30%. So that's the plywood, the limestone and the plywood into the roof space are all 30% solar absorbent. So let's try and find a colour for these plywood walls as well as for our limestone walls that are going to be around 30% solar SA. We'll scroll through our colour bond colours. This one here is looking the closest, a surf spray. So we'll use that 0.29. 